majestic mountains high In every drop of rain All of this just shows me How much you love me I am amazed By your beauty and your bounty I am amazed By your constant care for me I am amazed By your beauty and your bounty I am amazed By your endless grace for me Hi, am I on air? I see the logo of the Climate Change Commission. I hope I am seen, huh? Wait, just a minute. Let me see if I have... Yes, okay. They say that I am on air. Okay, pasensya na. Hindi ako kasing techie ng ating mga bisita ngayon. Oo na ba? Are we here? Yes, I can be seen and heard. Okay. Because it's different now. Because I'm speaking to you. From a forest I planted. Yes. You don't just plant a tree. You plant a forest. You don't just plant a tree. You also plant, if you can, native trees. Ano po itong punong sa likod ko? Sana makita nyo. Yan ay tibig. Teka ha. Lilipat ko ha. Kita ba? Tibig. Oh, sabi ng isang forester, ang tibig daw ay Ah, uh, ibig sabihin maraming tubig. Aba, ang galing kaya ng may water catchment ako diyan sa aking tabi. Alam naman niyo, ako si talagang strict ng pag-implement ng environmental laws, ang aking ecological solid waste management, paghihiwalay ng ating mga basura sa nabubulok at hindi nabubulok, ang ating pag-imbak ng tubig ayon sa rainwater catchment. Teka. Dati ako nag-enumerate ng laws. Kala ko solo ako. Apat pa lang ating mga magagaling na mga change makers. Aba, kasama ko ngayon ang aking not so young, 
Pero pag, alam mo kami ni Attorney Ipat, mga young at heart and forever Echo Warrior. Say hello, Ipat. Uh, kasama ko siya, palagi naman, dahil siya ay nasa lawa ng taal. Walang putok ha, Ipat? Okay? Wala sana. Magandang okay. umaga sa lahat. Ito. Okay, maganda umaga. Okay. Ako ay nasa forest. Si Ipat ay nasa tubig, nasa lawa. She has her mini forest of native trees. Her husband does by buying ID of the native plants. I also have IDs of my native plants, trees, gulay, lahat. Hindi pa nakabaybayin, pero advocate na ako ng baybayin. Pero lumilihis na naman ako. Kanina pinag-uusapan ko yung mga batas ko. Ngayon naman baybayin. Kasi, bakit? Gusto ko itong mga batang kasama natin ay ang ating ginagawa sa pagpapatupad ng aking higit na sampung environmental laws ay alam. Baka mamaya, itest ko sila. Nako, baka matakot sila bigla. Itest ko sila kung alam nila yung aking mga environmental laws. Ha? Anyway, kasama natin ang apat sa pinakamagagaling na Pilipino. Totoo yan. Mm. They are change makers. They, uh, babasahin ko na lang. Okay, isa-isa kasi ang galing-galing eh. Si Antoinette Toss, I'm sure you all know her. I follow her Instagram. It's so uh, well done. Uh, nag-dive ka recently, di ba? Nag-dive siya recently. She's multi-talented. And she's a founder of Communities Organized for Resource Allocation. We'll find out why she called it Cora and the Sustainable Planet. She's a Filipino-American award-winning actor, singer, host, and something we have in common. Alam po nyo, in 2001, were you born? Yes, you were. <laughs> I was awarded by the United Nations Environment Program in Turin, Italy as the Global 500 Role of Honor, a UNEP laureate. And I'm so glad that our guest today, Antoinette Foss, is a UNEP Global Environment Ambassador for the Philippines. She founded CORA, or Community Organized Resource Allocation, a nonprofit organization dedicated to creating sustainable programs to empower volunteers, women. And she's also the founder of Sustainable Planet. So we really have so many things in common. A purpose-driven business centered on improving the lives of But indigenous people, great. Tonight, I'm going to have an interview with ITs, um, on ITs, and women and vulnerable Filipino communities. And of course, as I said, she's a UNEP ambassador for the Philippines. So, and dami niyang advocacies similar. Say hello, Antoinette. Hello, good morning. Magandang magandang po sa inyong lahat. And good morning, Deputy Speaker Legarda. I'm I'm truly so honored. Pwede ba kayong mga po, Deputy Speaker? Pwede lahat na lang. Um, Tita Lauren. Sure Pwede po. Tita Lauren. Oh Promise? my God. Promise. Okay. It would be my honor to call you Tita Lauren. <laughs> okay. Okay. Kasi isa sa mga guests natin ay talagang tita niya ako dahil mami niya ang kaibigan ko eh. <laughs> Oo. Sige. Um, Uh, Antoinette, I, I look forward to working with you uh, because we have many similar advocacies. First, we're both UNEP. I was 20 years ago, exactly 201, and now 2021. I was a young 41-year-old when I went to Turin, Italy to receive uh, that award from the UNEP. And I'm so glad you're now the Goodwill Ambassador for the Philippines. Let me help you for the Philippines and for the world, huh? Antoinette. Oh my gosh, Tita Lauren, that would actually be a dream come true to be able okay. to work with you. <laughs> you. You promise me you will help me in all my advocacy. Baka maloka ka. <laughs> dami, oh dami. Tita so, Lauren, dami. I promise you right now for the rest of my life, I am here um, to Ay, serve you. Ay, nanginginapot ako. Nakakaiyak ka. <laughs> Nakakaiyak. O, tika, tika. O, sige, we'll get to you. Ay, naku, ang galing talaga ng mga batang to. Ang susunod. Ang gagaling. Alam mo, I discovered her through a foreigner. Nung nabasa ko na siya'y ini-endorso at pinupuri ni guess who? Michelle Obama. Wow! Former first lady of the US, Michelle Obama, pinuri ang isang batang babaing environmentalist na fisheries technologist na taga-region ko. Pero siya'y taga-negros. 
hindi sa Panay, pero taga Region 6, Mayad na Aga, Maayong Aga, Carmela Eliaga, a licensed fisheries technologist and a certified SSI free diver rising from a small coastal community in Southern Negros. And since she was 15, she was a scholar, an eco guide. You know, we should, in our Green Jobs Act, dapat damihan natin ang eco guides, whether for the coastal areas or for the mountains or even for the wetlands. And she's a camp facilitator. Nako, imagine kung tayo ay magkakasama sa isang camp ngayon, kasama ko si Antoinette, kasama ko si Carmela, di ba? Ang saya, puro virtual. Tapos yung beach mo sa likod, totoo ba yan o hindi? Ano yata yan eh. Oh, anyway. So, um, Carmela is also, she teaches conservation and sustainability at the Danhugan and Island Environmental <clears throat> Education Program. I'd like to know. Wow, I want to attend her class, Carmela. Ha? Naguturo ka ng environmental conservation and sustainability. Pwede mong turuan ang aming mga teachers na magturo din sa aming mga isla. Pwede kong i-adopt yung iyong ginagawa ng Island Environmental and Education Program sa mga isla ng Antique. Ayan, ng Philippine Reef and Rainforest Conservation Foundation. Mangroves ba yung sa likod mo, Carmela? Um, yes po. Um, this is one of the lagoon in Danhugan Island. Uh, this is a mango forest sa uh, my background. Yes. And um, what part of Southern Negros are you from? Um, I am originally from Kawayan po in Southern Negros. Pero ngayon, I'm here sa Bacolod for a better internet connection. Ah, okay. Thank you for uh, para lang sa show na ito. Um, <laughs> Ay, salamat. Ganon kalayo. Um, from from Kawayan, mga three to four hours away. Wow. Sorry, sorry. Nako, pinagbiyahe pa kita ng three to four hours sa internet. Oo, sana pinadala na lang kitang internet sa isla. <laughs> then, oh, okay, tika. I want to know more about your island at baka magbigay tayo ng dole to pad cash for work for the fisher folks. Si Bahaw Nice. Okay. And then, maganda magkaroon tayo ng uh, lecture mo sa ibang mga teachers natin sa mga isla ng Antique para maging model yung ginagawa mo, di ba? Wow. Yay, sige pa. Thank you. Okay. And I know that you also work as a community facilitator and project officer um, of your foundation para sa Proc Post Project. You know, I've yes. worked so much with this German project yung GIZ, no? Oo. In fact, ang inaral namin nun, ang working namin with GIZ is for the forest naman. But you're working with a GIZ-funded project that aims to support um, stakeholders, including LGUs, POs, national agencies for biodiversity and coastal ecosystems. Galing! Tama ba ako? Mali? Um, tama po, tama po. <laughs> okay, Ipat ha. Uh, si Attorney Ipat, uh, assign ko. Ayan, assignment na naman. Gagawin natin yan sa mga coastal areas. Um, Ipat is an expert on biodiversity and after this show, I will give you my message on International Biodiversity Day last May 22 um, para makita rin nyo yung aking uh, take on the bill that I filed. Sana matulungan nyo ako. Nag-file ako ng uh, isang bill, PENCAS, Philippine um, uh, Environment Natural Resource Accounting Bill para lahat ng ating biodiversity i-input natin sa ating pagkakwenta ng wow. pagkakakitaan ng bansa. Hindi pwedeng sinisira tapos bali wala. We don't value what we have. Ayan. Nako, tita ang tawag niyo sa akin, huwag deputy speaker or senator. Okay? Okay. Tapos si Gab Mejia, ilang taong ka na, Gab? Ang nanay mo, ang kaibigan ko, <laughs> natutuwa ako sa'yo. Nandiyan pa si Chi. Yes, say hello to your parents, especially to Chi. Uh, she's helped me in uh, many ways. And um, conservation photographer, gustong gusto ko yan because I am a documentarist. And I, as you know, well, before you were born, I was um, in television for more than 20 years since I was 18 years old. And um, I still do documentaries, but I love people who know how to express themselves um, through visuals, through, through in any way, written form, visual form. So Gab Mejia is a conservation photographer and environment storyteller. Okay. Okay. Um, he's a National Geographic Explorer, wow, and Nikon Asia Ambassador covering stories on nature, 
I want to see, uh, it's on your Facebook, Wildlife and Culture. Bakit ba itong mga batang ito para mga pinakbiyak na Loren? <laughs> Nature and Culture. Di ba totoo? Hindi ko sila kilala, pero I know their parents or nakikita ko sa pahayagan or nakita ko sa social media at alam mo, hinanpick po kayo ha. Hinanpick, I curated this episode talaga at sabi ko, gusto ko sila. Yan. He has published stories in National Geographic, Nikon, WWF, UNDP, CNN, and other international platforms. Co-founder of Youth Engaged in Wetlands. So, I'm sure nakapunta ka na sa wetlands sa NCR, sa Las Piñas, di ba? Mm -hmm. At yan ay kasama sa Ram Sardis. At yan, Gab, ay batas ko. Tinulungan ako ni Attorney Ipat noong 2018, gumawa ako ng batas na yung 94 protected areas sa buong bansa kasama ang wetland sa Lapapacheya. Alam mo yan, of course. So he's engaged in a global youth network advocating for the conservation of wetlands and natural climate-based solutions around the world and Forbes 30 Under 30, a weekly writer for Manila Times and presented stories for several TEDx talks. I'd like to see your TEDx talks. Um, nakakatuwa ang mga batang ito. I'm also proud, my connection with you sa Forbes 30 Under 30, hindi naman ako kasama dyan, yung anak ko, <laughs> who's also into renewable <laughs> energy uh, in a way that, that's important for the environment. So, how old are you now, Gab? I'm 24, tita, tita Lauren. Wow! Si Carmela ba? Alam ko si Antoinette, uh, she's in her 30s. Si Carmela, uh, how old was she? I'll ask her later. Nakakatuwa talaga. Raniel Navarro, uh, thank you so much, Gab. I'll see you later. Not Geo Award winner ng 2021, Raniel Miranda Navarro, elementary teacher. Wow, we're going to Albay, Legaspi City. Teacher Rain. Naku, gustong gusto ko mga teacher. Ang galing mag-communicate at napakalalim ng knowledge. Teacher Rain, dapat umulan na. Okay, she's also a Yes O Club advisor. Ano ba yung Yes O? National Award winning coach. Aba, but may connection talaga tayong lahat in journalism. Okay, my lolo was a journalist, Jose P. Bautista, and I took up broadcast journalism. She's a YMCA volunteer for 11 years, a loving wife to RG and mother of Rainier Kyrie. She was one of the green ambassadors for climate change adaptation in Asia and Pacific of the YMCA in a 2019 Fulbright Scholar at Syracuse University, New York, and certified as a National Geographic educator in 2020. May I request you, please, uh, Teacher Rain, Pwede ka mag-lecture. Maski isang lecture lang sa University of Antique. Pwede? Oo. Yes, Sana pwede. Uh, it, it, Hi. It, 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 pwede? Uh, I can ask yes, you. Ma. I can link you. Can, can my staff ask Dr. Crespo to log in? And all. Dapat pala mandatory viewing nito sa ating mga University of Antique students. But I, I'd like to greet Undersecretary Anne um, Sevilla. And uh, she put this out on Facebook. Partner natin sa ating stories for a better normal ang DepEd. Kaya ang mga teachers, principals, para teachers, DepEd supervisors, ang ating DepEd community are with us all over the country. At okay lang pong mag-stop ang klase manood nito. This is siguro the best of the best. Kasi lahat naman ng stories na one year na ito, ha, imagine, ibig sabihin po, sa panahon ng pandemic, huwag po mawala ng pag-asa. Sa panahon ng pandemic, maari tayong mag-create. Sa panahon ng pandemic, pwede maging positive. At ito ang nangyaring positive. Nung naipasa natin yung pano ka lang batas na better normal bill in the House of Representatives, I thought maganda na ipaliwanag na ano may better normal? Dapat tayo sa dating normal. Hindi. Hindi tayo pwedeng babalik sa dating normal na nagabaliwala sa kalikasan. Anyway, balik tayo kay Teacher Rain. In 2021, her call to solution, Goals for Environmental Oversight Project, an innovation for remote learning setting was recognized by Nat Geo Society. Gusto ko malaman lahat ng ginagawa nyo. Natutuwa ako sa inyo. So, 
Sa mga nag-log in lang ngayon, what is this? This is the Stories for a Better Normal. It is a first date uh, with us, with change, game changers, policy makers, people working on culture, nature, agriculture, health, everything that touches the human life. Uh, Teacher Rain, mag-lecture ka ha, sa UA. Ha? Okay. Yes, so, magsimula muna tayo kay Antoinette. Thank you so much. We'll see you later. Antoinette Toss. Okay, show us. I'm sure you have a presentation. Um, tell us about the work you do for Sustainable Planet, the work you do with Cora, and the work you do with the United Nations Environment Program. Antoinette. Thank you so much, Tita Lauren, and good morning again, everyone. Um, maraming salamat po para sa opportunity na maibahagi namin yung kwento kung paano po kami actually napunta dito. Um, to be honest, sinasabi ko parati sa mga tao, uh, I never really dreamed of all the things that are happening now. Kung baga, humble dream ko po before na sana someday makagawa po ako ng something para lang to give back and to help others. But in really speaking of the fact of everything that's happening now, um, I never dreamed it would happen. So parang I feel like I would like to share the story because it actually comes from a place um, of pain and it comes from a place of um, loss. Um, I'll start presenting lang po. Um, so Communities Organized for Resource Allocation po is a nonprofit organization. So it stands for that po, but um, our initiatives are actually focused on both humanitarian, environmental, and of course, efforts to help reduce the effects of climate change and to empower local communities, women, and children. Um, and of course, uh, everything we do is centered sa ating SDGs, yung tinatawag natin Global Goals. Hindi ko po alam kung napanood niyo po yun, but may video po akong pinost. Nagawa ko po itong rap kasi gusto, gusto ko po talaga siyang maalala all 17 goals. Um, hopefully, someday ma-share ko din yun sa inyo. But truthfully, um, Cora is my mother. And before I tell you that story, i just like to show you a little bit about um, what we do at Cora through this video. At Cora, we believe that when people come together, Anything is possible. From our humanitarian missions to our programs to help protect the environment, sustainability has always been at the forefront of all that we do. And our volunteers have been at the heart of every positive impact. Selfless heroes serving as frontliners, especially during these most challenging times. Thank you. From our humble beginnings with friends and family members, our missions have brought us to where we are today, working with local communities, schools and the youth, the Philippine government, and various private sector brands in order to create a El Pipiche. We want to thank all the volunteers for taking the time, the effort, for waking up so early. Picking up the trash means so much. While cleaning our coasts do not provide a realistic solution to the plastic pollution crisis, it must be done. And while the urgent need exists to recover the plastics littering our environment, concrete solutions require systemic change, business unusual, and of course, action. <laughs> With the invaluable support of USAID, the leadership of the Paranaque City government, along with private sector partners and local citizens, Cora is on a mission to help create sustainable cities that work together towards circular communities. Because waste truly isn't waste until we waste it. We're gonna do our best. 
The mission? To divert waste from landfills by empowering women champions working in waste management at the Paranaque City Materials Recovery Facility as we work together to guide local citizens on the most effective ways to reduce their carbon footprint while transforming unsustainable lifestyles. All this as we turn waste into products of worth through the power of community segregation, composting, and recycling. With simple yet powerful actions, together we can strengthen waste management systems even in the most populated and progressive cities of the Philippines and neighboring nations, leading us all into a healthy, inclusive, and sustainable future with... With everything that we've been able to do in just a short five years, po, um, honestly, medyo nakakagulat din for me to look back at all the things that have happened. And truly, it really began with people, people that cared, mga kaibigan, even strangers na tumutulong. Ang dami ko pong mga na-build na relationships through this whole experience. And these are people that I truly value and have become family to me to this day. Po. And um, as I mentioned earlier, Cora is actually my mother. Um, she passed away in 2004 due to cancer, and because of that, po, um, I'm very open naman po in sharing my story that I didn't realize at the time that I went through deep depression po due to her loss. And even though losing a loved one is something we consider a normal life event, for me, po, it really turned into something that I took so deeply um, that I really suffered through for many years. Din po. But through that story, the reason I'd like to share it is because it was really the key to really, I guess, changing my heart, my mind, my soul, opening up my world um, into a different life. Um, yung pag hindi ko po masyadong pag-active sa showbiz, medyo conscious na rin po yung paggawa ko din ng minsan kasi kumbaga sinesave ko na rin yung oras ko para po sa mga projects na naumpisahan na namin because it's truly, I guess, the mission to give um, people change or to make a difference really came from my mom and she was known for being someone na parati mo malalapitan for help. She emphasized um, the value of giving no matter what, being kind no matter what, sharing no matter what. Pero nung nandiyan pa siya, I feel like, yes, I knew that it was valuable, but it never really turned into the passion that opened up my eyes till I actually felt pain and loss. And somehow it connected me to the feelings of what people would feel across the world. Kung meron man pong nasasaktan, meron pong nahihirapan, wala pong shelter, wala pong food, maybe going through the same, um, I would say, emotional pain, whether it be different reasons, we never say that one problem is more than the other. And through that, I felt we really can make a difference if we just try to connect and come together. And that's how it all began for us with love, courage, and purpose. Really believing that love, easier said than done, can fix all the problems of the world for both people and the planet. Love for people and love for nature. And of course, the courage to take action for the things that we believe in the most is another thing that my mom really emphasized. And purpose, believing that every little action really means so much. Walang small difference to make. There's no small changes and no small acts of kindness. They all mean the world to someone or to our planet. Um, our first initiative, if people were curious, how did it really begin? We were so intimidated. We talked about it for a long time kasi sabi namin, naku, wala naman tayong alam sa non-profit work. Gusto lang naman natin tumulong. Kaya lang kasi ayaw po namin na magkaroon ng isang beses lang. Gusto sana namin magtuloy-tuloy siya every month, at least once a month. Kung bagay yun yung deal po namin to each other, to friends sa barkada ko po. Sabi namin, sige, try natin once a month. Within six months, Nagkaroon na po ng mga chapters sa Cebu, sa Angeles, sa Tarlac. And then within one year, nagkaroon na po kami ng environmental missions. And this, these photos you're seeing right now, these are actually my friends, sina Cheska, sina Danica, sina LJC, Zara right here is my friend. We did it at her condominium. Um, simple lang po ito na ginagawa. I think ang lahat na magkakaibigan and families na whether it's a special occasion, a birthday, Christmas, we come together, nag-aambag-ambag po tayo, tapos bibili po tayo ng mga ilalagay na pagkain sa mga food packs at ipamimigay po sa, pangang sa mga nangangailangan. So, doon po talaga nag-start. And from there, it turned into our environmental missions today. Um, yung coastal cleanups po namin sa um, El Pipichea, and one of the most impactful things about this is hearing people really tell us what they've realized. Kung nagugulat kami, kasi sometimes we feel it's just a simple act na magpupulot, maglilinis. Pero nagugulat kami sa sabihin nila, 
oh my gosh, feeling ko yung mga ibang napulot ko kanina. Meron ako lahat nun sa bahay. And then parang we realize sometimes that it's not just the act of owning these items, pero also the act of disposing of them properly. So syempre we say, wag tayo sanang magpa-purchase or magsusupport ng products that are bad for the planet and bad for people or do not empower communities. But at the same time, the power is still ours to choose what we want to purchase and how we will dispose of it. And then with children po, we've been so inspired by the stories, especially of our champion teacher, si Teacher Pochi. Yung school po nila, nagawa po nilang plastic-free sa St. Mary's Baliwag, Bulacan. At yung mga bata po mismo, ang gumagawa ng initiative, nag-start po sila ng sarili nilang mga grupo-grupo na rin as eco ambassadors because they saw that they can make a difference po. And with this, scholarships within their school were supported um, for children in need that didn't have an education. So we really can see that help can come from anywhere. And we hope that through our simple volunteer activities, we can do more. Um, because of this, po, we've also been able to get the support of people that are in entertainment that use their platform for a difference. Um, even our first feeding program, Wala naman pong makakaalam po nun kung di po namin nagamit ang power ng social media. And it's really inspired by a movement sa state, sa LA, sa Los Angeles. Mga kaibigan din po namin, ganun din po sila nag-umpisa. Eight friends, they came together one Christmas night. Naglagay po sila $10 each, so $80. Nag-shopping po sila, bumilip sila ng mga pagkain, pinamigay sa homeless. Pero after they posted it, linagin nila hashtag lunch bag. All of a sudden, akala ng mga tao, isa na siyang organization. Within five years, nagkalat na siya to 150 cities all over the world and umabot pa dito sa Philippines which is how we started so it's really beginning with baby steps beginning where you are beginning with friends um beginning with your family even strangers as i've mentioned and dami po naming volunteer na parang family ko na po talaga ngayon um and at the same time once again social media we know that it can be toxic sometimes. We know that we need to manage our use, but at the same time, pag ginamit po natin ito to share positivity, to share ways to empower each other, napakalaking bagay po yung magagawa po. Um, I'm also grateful for the honor and the opportunity to work with um, the United Nations uh, Environment Program. And um, that recognition, honestly, to me, is so much pressure. I feel like every day I work so hard to just even deserve it because it's not even something that was a dream that I had, but it, it happened. And I just want to be able to do my part in any way that I can. Po. And with that, the value really of that is being able to share knowledge, dialogue, stories across the region para po makapagtulong-tulungan din po tayo and not just inspire each other, but inspire each other into action. Um, ito po nahiya akong ipagmalaki, pero pagmamalik po lang po. Ito po yung mga ibang naumpisahan din po namin initiatives um, since we began for a Five years ago po, so Clean Seas Pilipinas is an initiative with the DNR, the UN Environment Program, Asia Pacific, of course, um, uh, GEF and UNDP. Siyempre, ito po yung campaign uh, to just bring awareness to everyone that plastic pollution is slowly destroying our planet, but the solutions actually lie in our behavior change as well. The policies that already exist. Um, ang nabangit nga po ni, um, ni Tita Lauren, mo, ko na po sabing deputy speaker na, now, the laws that actually she's made, we the Philippines has some of the best environmental laws in the world talaga. And if only we could really implement them and really work together to make them a reality and to really follow them, po, we'll have a better world and a better Philippines. And of course, we're also so proud po, of um, National Geographic Earth Day run and naging partner din po kami niyan. Um, and of course, Cora and USAID's Clean Cities Blue Ocean Program, which I had just showed the video for earlier. This is our first um, funded program by a group like the United States um, Agency for International Development. We're truly honored, we're grateful, um, we're up for the challenge and the task. And this really is about finding ways to help strengthen waste management. Because as I've mentioned, lahat ng solution. the Paranaque City government has even shown us so many of the best practices mismo galing din sa mga communities that are already working. So it really proves that if we work together, so much can change and so much can happen po. from policies, of course, to our waste management and our workers, and of course, to local citizens like you and me. Um, we've also learned through our journey these past five years, one of the best ways to help empower communities and to empower citizens is to empower them to help themselves and support themselves rather than just simple charity. But at the same time, kasi, honestly, it all matters. Eh. It's all stages and phases and we all have a role to play. So kumbaga, 
pandagdag lang din namin talaga ito. Um, we also learned, of course, through the plastic pollution crisis, sabi natin, mga straw. So nakahanap po kami ng mga avenues of livelihood programs, for example, sa bataan po, for indigenous communities to harvest and, of course, uh, craft these bamboo straws. Ang first experience ko po nito, actually, sa isang indigenous community, nung pinigay po sa akin, green pa po, fresh na fresh from the tree. So these are actually not new, um, not new systems. They're not new products and not new ideas. They've existed. And our indigenous peoples actually have so many Many amazing knowledge that they can teach us to be more sustainable as well and to protect each other better. Um, the women of Samala, um, they're a wonderful group of women that we met through our journey that are now um, sewing and creating different kinds of eco bags from scrap fabrics, mula po sa mga basahan, all the way po sa mga eco bags. Now we're also uh, in partnership with mga different bakeries na nakakakuha po kami ng mga used flour sacks na gawa sa tela para magawa na rin po siyang mga bags. And of course, we also support initiatives for water lily weaving. But honestly, the message we are trying to send out here po is sa totoo lang, marami na po tayong magagaling na livelihood programs across the country. We're not starting anything new really because they're everywhere and they're all incredible in their own way from different different parts of the country, but we hope to strengthen their market. Kasi kulang na kulang po ang kanilang exposure. So sana pag bumili kayo ng local products, ipromote ninyo sa naggaling, sinong gumawa at kung gano'ng kaganda at kagaling. Kasi they need more support and we hope through the Sustainable Planet, we can highlight and spotlight these livelihood programs and these initiatives that both empower people but also help protect the planet. I wanted to quickly show this. They're na proud kami sa nagawa namin product with um, collaboration with uh, National Geographic Earth Day Run. So we provided the trophies po. Ito po ay wood um, from trees na na-uproot ng typhoon na in-engrave. Pero ito pong medalyon, gawa po ng ating Tibuli Indigenous Community sa Lake Cebu, South Cotabato. So it's the same material used for yung mga cute na accessories, bangles, souvenirs, all of that po. And... I think many people didn't know. I was shocked to find out that it's actually upcycled brass. So galing po din siya talaga sa mga mini-melt nilang items na nasira na, mga different metal products or brass products. Um, this is an initiative we are launching next week po na matagal na matagal na po namin talagang dream. Oh my goodness. Um, this is also with the help of Oxfam Filipinas and of course, um, Doc Ed of, um, of Samar din po. So maraming salamat po because this is an initiative to help fight climate change and empower women. As na mentioned po ni Tita Lauren kanina, it's not just about planting trees. It's about really planting the right species and, and really nurturing them to grow, hindi lang po magplant. And at the same time, mangroves not just provide protection para sa ating mga kababayan, lalo na tinatamaan tayo sobra ng mga typhoons and storms. But at the same time, they are also great for the biodiversity of the region, for fisheries, and to empower the communities that live there and that are involved. I just like to mention, lastly, um, we don't say people and the planet before profit because profit is needed to sustain things. Pero sabi lang po natin, imbis na yun pong isipin, sana pwede natin sabihin, people, planet, and purpose, people, planet, and purpose. Now, our actions will hopefully make a difference to make someone smile, even just to make someone smile. It doesn't even have to be so profound. That in itself is already changing the world. And reminding all of you that everything that you are, you are the only one in the world that is like that. Today you are you, that is truer than true. There is no one alive that is youer than you. You are the only one with your fingerprint. And if you have that special fingerprint, if even identical twins are not identical, can you just imagine all the power inside of you, all the special qualities waiting to be unleashed upon the world? Changing the world is not just about naman po, um, nonprofit work. It's not just naman po about charitable actions. I believe po talaga, um, everyone here today with us represents that because it's it's really using your gifts, using the things that you feel um, were given to you, your voice, your vision, um, your ideas, your gift of speaking, or your gift of maybe cheering people up. So, um, yun lang po. I Great. Just, yes. Wow! Nakakatuwa! Uh, in, we are, let's say, um, a generation, two generations apart, but never mind the age. But I want to give you a virtual hug and thank you for doing all the things we started way, way before. Kung, um, I maybe don't want to sound presumptuous if I say, para may batang Lauren. <laughs> na ako. I'm so you're honored. So, um, you're so inspiring and inspired. And I'm so grateful 
the first you mentioned the ecological solid waste management law and you do the coastal cleanups so that we will encourage people not to throw any solid infectious or human waste in any body of water sa oceans man sa ilog man sa mga bukal o sa lawa yan so thank you for doing the coastal cleanups so natutuwa din ako na yung mga produkto ng katutubo gaya ng sa South Cotabato yung mga brass makers sana manood ka rin yung aming dayaw na programa how we uh, are able to document indigenous knowledge and intangible heritage of our indigenous people but really I will get you to join me in all of our shared advocacy for nature and for culture and use your uh, facility of being able to communicate and your pure heart based on your love for your mama. So your mother passed on, you were very young. Yes, well, actually, I, I wasn't, I wouldn't say super young. I was 23 na po at the time. Um, and it was in 2004 po. But she was literally my everything talaga. Like, my best friend, my mom, my sister. I, I didn't really expect it. I really felt like I wasn't prepared. And it was cancer that was uh, when we found out stage four na po ka agad. Um, and she lived a very healthy life. But I think because of that, maybe she didn't realize that checkups and early detection were also super necessary po talaga. And the thing is, though, the mark that she left on, not just my life, but our family, even strangers. I still come across strangers today that say, your mom helped me so much. Um, those are the things that really, I guess, stuck with me when I was thinking of missing her and um, the pain of the loss. And yes. it turned into all of this somehow. So uh, we're so touched by your story and have a similar life in a way because I lost my mother when I was in my early 30s and she died of cancer as well. And it was a quick, quick uh, death. But never mind that. But your mother inspired Cora and the work you do for a sustainable planet is so inspiring as well. And we can do so many collab. It's just the time is never enough. And um, I'll get in touch with you. And thank you for helping Mother Nature. Thank you for helping Indigenous Peoples community. Thank you for helping implement my laws. Pwede ko ba enumerate? Mabilis lang, ha? Yan, yes. para ma-memorize mo, ha? Okay. Republic Act 9003, Ecological Solid Waste Management Law. Pangalawa, Clean Air Act 1999. Pangatlo, Clean Water Act ng 2003. Pangapat, Climate Change Act ng 2008. People Survival Fund, yung amendatory. Tapos yung End Dream Law, 2010. Tapos yung Environmental Education Awareness Act at yung Expanded Integrated Protected Area System declaring 94 protected areas all over the country. Ilan lang yan sa mga batas and including the RE law. Pero so, homework mo, Antoinette. <laughs> Pag-aralan mo lahat ng sinabi kong batas and then I'll call you within the next few days if okay with you. I know you're so busy, you're all over and diving and doing all your projects, helping so many people. But gusto ko lang mag-usap tayo on how we can work together with your energy and my energy, even if I'm older than you. Yeah, we can really um, uh, change the world. Yeah, in our own little corners of the world. Okay. Yes, po. yes, na yes, po. and I'm such a fan. Po. I actually have um, files of your laws, po talaga, and I talk about oh. you I'm as well. So I'm to connect with you, po. Yeah. I, I don't have a daughter. Para ko para ko may anak <laughs> na babae. Okay. Uh, Nakakatuwa, Thank you so much. Um, uh, from Antoinette Tos, we go to another outstanding Filipina. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Antoinette. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. and um, the the picture at your back is Boracay. Actually, I'm not even sure it's part of the virtual background because sadly I am at home. <laughs> yes, so, in Metro Manila. In this Metro is Manila. Where, yes, po in Paranaque po, and I'm wishing po that I was here. Minatch ko narin po yung outfit ko para tropical. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Basta sustainable ang ating pati fashion. Diba? Pati yung ating uh, ginagawa. Kaya, uh, 
pati yung earrings ko, I think gawa ito sa pandan ba ito o buri. Ano <laughs> Ulit-ulit yun na lang ang sinusuot ko. Salamat. Gusto ko lang isuot tanay. Pakita yung suot ko eh. Ito ay gawa sa tie-dye lang tong luma. Ito, uh, indigo. This is um, natural cotton. Kita kaya? Kita ba? At saka, ang dye, hindi, hindi chemical na dye, pero natural indigo dye. Ayan. Sa antique kasi, uh, pinapropagate ko rin ang natural dye. Anyway, thank you so much, Antoinette. Uh, we love your energy. Thank you for your time. You're a very busy uh, person with not just in showbiz, but perhaps equally or more important, your environmental passion and advocacy. Thank you. At you say, Antike, duro gid ka salamat, palangga ko kamo. <laughs> now we go to Region 6. Thank you, Antoinette. Thank you, po, Tita Lauren. Good morning. Yeah, it's like I know you. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you. Carmela Eliaga. Ayan. Fisheries technologist. Ano ba ang mga ginagawa ng isang fisheries technologist? At ano yung mga proyekto mo sa iyong foundation na na-recognize ka ni First Lady Michelle Obama dahil sa iyong mga ginagawa? I think you have a short presentation. Um, yes, well, I have my presentation. Oh, sige. We'll watch. Salamat. Thank you, po. Ayan, yay. So, um, I think di ko na kailangan mag, uh, magpakilala. Grabe, uh, Tita Lauren. I, I will call you Tita Lauren. <laughs> um, thank you for, grabe, um, um, super na introduction. I um, I really appreciate it. And um, thank you also, Antoinette Grabe. You're, you are so inspiring. You are one of those um, women and um, someone I really look up to. I thank you for um, inspiring us. Um, um, yeah, so I will start. Uh, my presentation. So I am working in a nonprofit uh, NGO. It is Philippine Reef and Rainforest Conservation Foundation. Um, so our our work is really on um, environmental education, um, the deep program and the marine wildlife camp, na, which is really known uh, sa na program namin, which I am also where I came from. And um, I can say na molded me na um, maging, ayan, mapagmahal sa, sa kalikasan and um, inspired me to pursue uh, fisheries. So uh, it is really our vision in the foundation that wildlife and people in harmony for a sustainable future. And I personally believe kasi na um, conservation doesn't mean na protecting only those um, I uh, mean, you know, the wildlife and nature, but for me, it, was, it is also about protecting the people, you know, working with them to, ayan, to, to achieve a sustainable future. Because uh, we can also, makikita natin ngayon na we really, uh, people, we, we really need to work together and also especially uh, really um, involving the community na mag work together for, you know, for, um, coastal resource management and protecting protecting our our resources next please and so um philippine reef is a nonprofit organization behind Danhugan island so Danhugan island is a marine protected area and a wildlife sanctuary na makikita in barangay bulata kawayan negros occidental where kung saan ako nagaling at uh, kung saan talaga ako lumaki. So I'm really um, living just across this beautiful island. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah and and uh, it is also our mission in the foundation to inspire people to take action towards biodiversity conservation and sustainable uh, development through, one, we have experiential learning. So it is really our philosophy, we, the philosophy we carry on in every uh, program we have, especially some marine wildlife camp and some deep program. And also in our nature tourism program, Southern Hugan Island, uh, makikita natin in the picture, it is um, there we have our um, science education officer and also the program manager 
of our um, current um, project ngayon. Um, she's um, leading this young professionals. Um, um, they're going around the island, um, exploring different um, different ecosystems na present sa island. You know, experiencing every um, every little thing in the island. So, um, explaining why this um, ecosystems are really important and why is it important also to protect them. And um, second is collaborative research. So we also partner with um, different college and uh, state colleges and universities and also uh, researchers that wants to come together um, to conduct research about uh, monitoring and assessment of this um, uh, marine resources and even in the in terrestrial. And um, third is nurturing partnerships. So as an NGO, we are really happy to partner with different LGUs here in Southern Negros, especially Kawayan, uh, Municipality of Kawayan, uh, City of Sipalay, and Municipality of Hinobaan, and also um, the other neighboring um, LGUs. And we are also happy that we are partnering with um, other um, NGOs that works for conservation and um, environmental protection. And uh, lastly, it is enabling communities. So in every um, conservation work that we have, we really um, go back to our mission, uh, to our vision, which is people in harmony for a sustainable future. So we really um, always looking back for the communities, how we can help them. Um, so we, we provide them or assess, uh, facilitate them with uh, trainings and also give them opportunities to access um, sustainable livelihoods, uh, especially because it's a coastal community and we are, they are really dependent sa, sa dagat and we have also marine protected area across around, and also around the Nguyen Island. And in the picture, we can also see um, sa right at the lawang picture ng Denhugan. Um, one back from 1991 and the other one in 2015. So it really shows that nature will regenerate and heal itself if we let them, if we let nature. So um, this picture shows na, ayan nga, the nature will really uh, uh, heal itself. So um, this back in 1991, this is the photo of the island. So and in 2015, makikita natin mas um, mas dumami na yung puno. So we well, hindi na um, we did not plant any seeds here anywhere in the island. It's just really the birds and the bats that do the um, the pollination and spreading the seeds around the island. So yun. Next. I will just show her here. Um, a video of Marine Wildlife Camp, which I also experienced in Nenhugan Island. For education. The Marine and Wildlife Camp is really about connecting with nature, seeing wildlife in their natural habitats. That's our educational philosophy. The ecosystems in the Nugan, the mangrove forests, the seagrass beds, the coral reefs, present an opportunity for students to learn about each of these ecosystems and how they're connected to each other. You get to experience the whole thing in Dunhugan. Camp pushes you outside your comfort zone. Learning outdoors is a really great technique. Earth science, for the kids who's watching this, it'll make it a lot more interesting. Not only in the tropics, are coming. Camp has definitely changed me. I'm not as scared as I was and I met a lot of people. Our slogan in camp is inspiring today's youth to be tomorrow's conservationists. You're committed. You won't give up. You will protect these animals as if it's your own. 
now we think that we are inspiring today's youth to be today's conservationists. Let's get a bit more scientific. What is a greenhouse gas? <laughs> Conservation is the protection of the environment. These guys are the people that I'm never going to forget when I grow up. These are the people that I shared my first experience in the Hogan with. Yay, so, Yay. Yun, so, uh, so yun yung uh, Marine Wildlife Camp, so deep naman is the Nugan Island en Environmental Education Program, which is molded from uh, Marine Wildlife Camp. So um, yun, uh, that's what we do during the camp, and I can say na siguro doon talaga ako namulat, and uh, doon ako na, na inspire, kasi we meet uh, scientists, mga... Um, environmental uh, environmentalists and um, experts in science na makikita mo you know kid makikita mo sila doing that kind of work inspired you to you know to to also um, take that path of um, conservation uh, conservation work so um, and in during camps we learn ayun nga about climate change environmental issues and um, solid waste management uh, and conservation. So um, one also vision of the of deep or the Hugan Environmental Education Program is to um, 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 teach this um, young or these kids to and also mentor them to become a leaders of their own community, which I am also now proudly saying that they really <laughs> um, um, do a great job because I am now also inspired and I, I am now the one who is also helping to lead my community um, as a futures technologist and also as a community officer. So this photo um, uh, back when maybe mga 2016 during our community fiesta in Barangay Balata where we, uh, the scholars and the campers lead the um, activity like um, um, coastal cleanup and also film showing about the environments. Uh, we incorporated these activities, uh, uh, fiesta activities, then in our in our area. Ayan, so and also um, I started volunteering as um, after after I graduated in a camp. I I volunteers sa island and also sa mga projects and programs ng foundation. And isa doon, ang SWEEP, ang Sea Waste Education to Eradicate Plastic. It is a USAID-funded um, project that uh, a, a campaign for a more fish, not plastic, um, a project for, ayun nga, which go, the goal is to um, eradicate or uh, yes, eradicate plastic flows in our ocean. So with the left, this is fish bolan, our IEC. Um, it is um, it shows the history of plastic and ang apekto niya sa sa dagat and also in marine creatures and not just for like tur not just for turtles and other uh, and not just for turtles and fishes but also certain bilang human because we are ngayon um, we are not sure kung ang mga pagkain na kinakain natin if it's still safe ba and uh, the water that we drink is it still safe with this um, with uh, microplastic we're not sure maybe because maybe there's a microplastic in it especially the fishes that we eat so this IEC also shows um, how important um, um, solid waste management in coastal communities and also for our food safety and also as a, a source of a livelihood. And um, yes, so again, so um, this uh, fish bolan it shows um, a sample of food, but it's with plastic. So if malalaman ba natin if na may plastic na nakain natin, are we still gonna eat this? So it's a information education campaign for um, solid waste management in the community. 
that I and we also do uh, coastal cleanups in in our partner communities. So we so binibilang namin yung mga basura we edit we audited that tapos um at the end nakikita namin kung ano ba yung klase ng plastic and or what product are the most occurring in this uh, plastic and also how can we what can we do to you know to prevent and to to lessen this uh, um, plastic production next up ayan so my first job job in the foundation before i even graduate in college is the community facilitators facilitator so we uh, have this eight prototypes of wala oh, six sorry sorry stores or the what zero waste store in southern negros so we monitor and enumerate in in that store so we stayed um seven days for seven months in that store so we help the sari sari store owners to record the plastic they prevented each day tapos ayan so but this wala us uh, but this um store owners went through the process of design thinking where in sila yung nag-isip kung anong mga produkto ng mga um kung anong mga produkto ang i-commit nila into into to transition into wala o six so they also sila din ang nag-isip kung anong klase ng magiging itsura ng store nila para sila mismo yung really yung may stake kung anong gagawin and they're really para they're also really committed to and you know, to continue their wala o six stores next up now um i am working that was two years ago and now i am working with um this replicating project um pro coast or the sustainable coastal protection through biodiversity conservation and coastal ecosystems affected by typhoon in the philippines in short pro coast uh, but we are focusing here in southern negros uh, still partnering with three lgus in the south which is kawayan sipalay and hinubaan so the goal of this project is to enhance management effectiveness of mpas through strengthening financing and evaluation system so we um do workshops for MPA managers, how can they uh, strengthen their MPAs and also ensure sustainability of mangrove ecosystem through the development of eco parks and aid in conservation of mangrove and beach forest through establishment of nursery and um, species propagation program. Next up. So in in my next slide, it will show kung ano what is my role as a community officer sa project. So um, it means I have to make sure na um, different stakeholder the different stakeholders um, will really join, like um, fisher folk organizations, people organizations, and even the women and the youth. I make sure na they participate in like coastal resource assessment, we make sure that this um, representative from the community participates in an assessment. So they also know kung, kung know ang status ng, resource assess, ng resources nila, especially kasi dito sila nag, uh, dumidepende in some, like in um, mangroves and in seagrass as a source of their livelihood. And and um, also we make sure that this members of the community participates in planning and management for local for um, environmental policies. We make sure that their voices are heard. Tapos we make sure na their issues and their concerns ay ayon na napagtutuunan sen. And uh, we make sure that uh, kung ano man yung we, we make sure that kung ano man yung gusto nila for their um, areas, especially for their marine protected areas, are are heard. And um, kasi usually kasi the coastal communities, especially the future, future months are pag nasa workshop, they're usually uh, nahihiya kung mag, magsalita. So 
um, being there also working as a community officer in my own community in Balata, parang um, help them to gain confidence na I have someone from my own community that can help me. And we also make sure that uh, the youth and women are participating in this kind of environmental activities. And that's the last of my slide. Thank you. Congratulations for the work you do, Carmela. Uh, talagang grassroots, alam mo talaga, at pinapatupad mo ang ating mga batas. Um, ilang beses mo sinabi yung solid waste management. Uh, kailangan ba nag-culture change sa mga tao sa marine sanctuary sa isla at sa mga coastal cleanup? Kasi yung paglinis, ilang araw lang yan. But anong, mas, anong linis natin kung tayo ay duminong-dumi at nagatapo ng solid waste sa ating mga uh, karagatan? So, paano mo ginawa yung makonbinsi sila? Una, na sumama sa'yo. Pangalawa, um, ang fisheries technologies, di ba? binabalanse mo ang sustainable uh, fish farming. Oo, hindi yes, lang tayo conservation, pero yung mga proseso, uh, paano siyempre kumita ang ating fishery sector? Oo. So, paano mo binabalanse ang iyong pagiging isang passionate ecologist, uh, sea warrior, <laughs> at yung kita naman, at yung rural livelihoods ng ating mga mangingisda? Yan. And teacher ka pa. Uh, nakita ko kung paano enjoy ang mga bata dun sa sea camp na ginawa mo. Um, ang dami kong tanong at kung ginagawa mo ba yung iyong pagtuturo environmental education hindi lamang sa iyong um, area in South Negros um, I think it's in is it Kawayan? Yes pa Kawayan Ka Kawayan okay meron din Kawayan sa Isabela eh. anyway <laughs> uh, pwede mong let's say mag sea camp yan maski virtually uh -huh. or even physical pag allowed na in other provinces as well yeah. so that you can share your uh, knowledge hands on grassroots on the ground using your science to help the people. Okay, Carmela. Ang dami kong tanong. Ha? Pinagsama ko na yung aking sampung tanong sa isang tanong. Yes, okay. So, yeah. Um, behavior change is really also very challenging kasi especially sa, sa coastal um, communities. Uh, but ayun po. Um, what we do is we really keep on um, keep on engaging them um, kasi it's it's behavior change because so it's hindi siya madali yan nga coastal clean up is just one activity and pagkatapos nun, ano so yun uh, we make sure also to to involve kids the youth and we also partner with schools and we have also now uh, in our in our community uh, Bulata National High School um initiated its own wala o six uh, wala o six canteen sa school nila and where um they don't they they practice selling of this um indigenous and native delicacies in their in their school and they now um avoid using single-use plastics and uh, we also keep on partnering with um lgus facilitating them if they need um like technical supports and other supports for implementing their um solid waste management and also the deep program. Kung paborito mo yung batas kung yun na ah, yung ecological <laughs> solid waste management. It's, it's, Sige, it's continue very important. Doing that. Po. Con ah, continue doing that kasi one fourth lang ng Pilipinas ang nag-implement. Pero natutuwa ako yun ang sa lahat ng ginagawa mong maganda yun ang paulit-ulit mong ginagawa kasi yun ang basis ng lahat eh. Pag marumi ang yes, ating lupa, marumi ang tubig, marumi ang bundok. Eh ano na ang sama na ng ating livelihood, masama na ang ating Akalusugan, everything, yeah. Great, great. Um, continue, yeah. So, ginagawa mo ba ito also virtually or you have to be on the ground in your camp, yung iyong mga uh, teacher training, yung camp education sa mga kabataan? Is that only in Kawayan? Or can you do it also for other areas? Well, there are some organization po na they are replicating our 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 program, the learning, uh, the experiential learning, and also teaching um, environmental issues. Uh, they have also we also partner with different LGUs in the south if they like um pag pag they want also to replicate those programs. We are really open to assess and help them. Um, yan po. So deep we partner with. Uh, local governments, you uh, elementary and high schools 
kasi deep kasi it's um FPE pa- funded partner with also with Deep Ed. So that's why I was I was also able to join the camp before back when I was in high school. So yun po. Very good. Uh, I know that um the Dr. Crespo of the University of Antique is online and he said marami daw Eliaga din sa Antique. <laughs> kasi marami kaming <laughs> Coastal barangays, uh, actually 15 mm. out of the 18 uh, ng aming municipalities at ang dami namin mga isla din. Pero maganda, magturuan tayo ng mga best yes. practices natin. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, apat na oras ka pa magabiyahe. Nagigilty ako na pinagbiyahe no, 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 no. ka, Carmela. Oo, um, pwede kaya tayo mag-usap pagkatapos ng ating uh, show ngayon na naka-Facebook Live. At pwede mo rin pakita ito sa iyong mga susunod na camp. Diba? You can show... Mm the whole show para makita rin nila si Gab at si Teacher Rain at si Antonette at yung sa yung presentation, di ba? Maganda. Thank you uh, so much. Um, damo gid nyo salamat. <laughs> damo gid nyo salamat. Thank you, Gab. Yes, thank you. Uh, mula kay Antonette hanggang sa Negros, papunta tayo sa Metro Manila sa isang storyteller conservationist, photographer, at marami. Sinabi ko na ang kanyang short biodata kanina, we go to Gab Mejia and his short presentation. I want to see the video, the pictures, the stories that you tell Gab and what influenced you to become an environmentalist as you are. Okay, Gab. Hi, thank you, Tita Lauren, for the space here. And I'm really inspired to be a part of this community with Antoinette, Carmela, and Rain, and everyone here. And, well, I'll just share the screen. Well, so my, my journey actually in becoming a conservation photographer, or journalist, and storyteller was really more on the idea that, um, more on the idea that I realized being a Filipino, there was, there were, we weren't really, you know, there were really no role, role models to look up to, especially growing up. So most of my inspiration really came from my father who would yung dinadala ko sa mga bundok, sa mga lawa, sa wetlands, mangroves. And I I realized, I saw nakita ko yung mga pagbabago na nangyayari sa kalikasan, mga pagbabago sa mga lugar na minamahal namin. And bilang isang bata na medyo na realize ko rin na kailangan natin talaga mag mapakita at mag maging proud with our wildlife with the protected areas that we have around the Philippines. And Growing up, I also I saw na parang yung mga bata, yung mga classmates ko, puro kila, alam nila yung mga leon, they know the tigers, lions, elephants, but wala masyadong may really alam sa kanyari sa Haribon, sa Philippine Eagle, sa Tarsier, sa ating mga beautiful and rare animals. And I wanted to bridge this gap that in order for us to really, you know, protect what we know, uh, to protect uh, what we have, we can only do that by knowing what we have and really being aware about the issues that are happening in the Philippines. I remember doing this story for National Geographic on how our country, the Philippines, is where we can find some of the rarest animals in the planet. So imagine that hindi siya makikita kahit saan kundi sa ating lupa, sa ating dagat. And bilang isang pin- Pilipino, kailangan natin maging proud sa idea na meron tayong mga bagay na hindi na pwede maipagmalaki at pwede hindi maipapakita kahit saan pa sa mundo. And I think this sense of ownership, this sense of, you know, identity of being a Filipino and knowing what you have and being proud of it really stems to that idea of what we can do to make sure that we actually care for our country and the Philippines. And I realized like being a photographer, you know, the journey of being an environmental storyteller Nakita ko talaga yung napakaganda ng mga lugar sa buong mundo, the most beautiful places one can imagine, and how much we hold to lose in these places. But also this, as a journalist, I realized that we just can't share the beauty of our planet, but also the fragility of the things that are happening in our backyard. Ang mga nangyayari sa Mindanao, sa mga isla sa Visayas at sa Luzon.
So in order to really true, show the true story of what the Philippine environment is, we really needed to show also the issues that we are facing as a nation. And these fires that we captured was in the peatlands of the Agusan marshlands. So one of the protect of the INIPAS Act, especially for the expansion of the Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary. I was working for this project for two years for National Geographic and documenting the effects of climate change because the, our country, the Philippines, is also one of the most at risk from the effects and impacts of climate change. And it was a truly tragic story, but I realized, you know, there's so much things that we are losing that not a lot of people even know about. And this is where the storytelling comes in and how we can actually share these stories for, to collaborate, to bring organizations together, to empower the communities that are living there, especially the Manobo tribe. And part of being a conservation photographer, I think Carmelo also said this a while ago, that, that you know, con conservation is not just about protecting you know, the lands, the wildlife that we have, but it's also about empowering and protecting the people who are living there, the local communities, the marginalized communities, um, those disempowered people in underserved uh, towns and municipalities that surround these protected areas. Because in truth, lahat tayo nakikinabang sa environment, nakikinabang din tayo sa protected areas, nakikinabang tayo sa biodiversity. And this term is really called the, this coexistence of what we can show, of what we can move forward to as a country, and how what we can look forward to for the beauty of protecting everything around us the wildlife, the people, the communities, and nature, all in all. And I remember, you know, that these stories is just really about nature and showing its beauty also. It's about the people that's involved, the hardworking scientists, the hardworking defenders, environmentalists, who are on the front lines guarding and protecting these species. This is Kuya Amante Yogyog of, uh, in, Isa um, in Isabela, in the Northern Sierra Madre Natural Park of the Mabuaya Foundation or he is one of the, the, the main scientists that is working to protect uh, the Philippine crocodile. And you realize that these stories, you know, have tragic, you know, harrowing incidents, especially, for example, the story that we did for CNS was for the death of Calibasib, the, la the last captive bred tamarau in our entire planet found in Mindoro Occidental. And these species with only about an estimated 500 left in the wild, you realize that the impacts, this happened actually last year uh, while we were documenting during the pandemic. And more than this, the, the power of visual storytelling really shows how much we need to protect and how much we really have this passion and love for the environment and the nature. And the real impacts of it is the, are the people really protecting, the, these people who are on the front lines guarding the Tamaraos, guarding the Philippine crocodiles that we needed to show, that we needed to make sure that justice is being served. Because in truth, the Philippines, in fact, the Philippines is one of the deadliest countries in the world for environmental defenders, for conservationists, for environmentalists, according to a report by the Global Witness. And you realize, wow, for a country that's so mega biodiverse, one of the few mega biodiverse countries in the world with one of the most rare wildlife, why are people who are defending these creatures, uh, defending the environment that we have, the protected areas that we have, are the ones being affected the most and the ones being threatened, the ones being even sometimes worse killed? I think, you know, these realities are things that we have to face. And there are these nuances that we realize that we need to show instead of just, you know, like the power of storytelling to create change. I remember doing this, that, this story, collaborating with the United Nations Development Program, and through the story uh, and through the work of like amazing people, other uh, amazing environmentalists like Nella uh, from the Eco Explorations, we were able to bring in like build about like more than a million pesos to help protect and say, secure the livelihoods of the Tamarau Rangers. And these visuals, like it's the most understandable language that we have. You know, for a country, for a Philippines, na sobrang dami nating lenguaje, cultura, not everyone can, can you know, sometimes can really understand English or sometimes can understand Tagalog. Uh, but photography or like the visuals that we show, people can understand. It's one of the most universal languages that we have to be able to show and bring change to others. And being a conservation photographer, I think I realized that, I'm, you know, the power that we have, as, as also Antoinette mentioned, 
is that our identity, our being, our potentials, can, it can be from fisheries, it can be from nonprofit organizations, it can be from art, engineering, professions. Everyone has this impact. Again, uh, referencing to the interconnectedness and intertwined values of what nature is all about, that we, even as an individual, marami tayong impact na magagawa. And we can use our talents to the best of our abilities to be able to bring the change and that hopefully everyone can love and protect the environment that we deserve, that the marginalized communities deserve, and to you know, create solutions and move forward as a nation. I think being an environmental storyteller really shows how much you know, we can really protect the places that we love growing up, from the places that we were raised in, the places that we used to visit, and seeing the real impacts of the, the realities of climate change, of droughts, of social economic development, and all these other uh, factors involved. And we can start by bridging this gap and really connecting to nature of showing what we truly deserve for the people of the Philippines. It can be from the forest, from ridge to reef, from wetlands, from doorstep to delta. We have this ability to be able to protect these places that we truly love in our planet. We as an individual really can create power. And I think one of the most important things is realizing that much of the work on, on is much of the work really happens on the field, that much of our work really comes on the ground through grassroots initiatives, but we're also partnering with institutions like the government and partnering with and collaborating with organizations, may it be international or local. Collaboration is really the key. And visual storytelling really helps in bridging this gap and how we can connect together for the possible stories that could lead for a better future and a better normal. So I just want to share this you know, short video to show really how beautiful our planet is. And we hopefully that through the stories that we make, the more um, stories and realities that we come to understand, we hope to connect it to more. Uh, we hope that we can connect more to nature to it. I hope, you know, throughout the days of living for a better normal, I hope we can really be aware and understand the issues and realities that we are facing in our environment and that hope and we hope that we can educate and inspire the other communities and empower people around us. That's beautiful. Uh, those uh, video that, that you showed, uh, did you actually take those videos? You edited it. Yeah. Yes, Peter. Wow. But all this all is, of the time lapses, the drones, yeah. also the aerial. Yeah, this is not just one place, right? These are different places. Yeah, this is all the all the different mountains, belt, wetlands, forests we have around the world, and most of it actually over the Philippines. From there are scenes of Mount Pulag, the Agusan Marsh with the birds, the migratory yes. birds. Oh. You um, you actually shot this video. Yeah. All you the went content, to those places. All the photos. Yeah. Great. 
And uh, was this already uh, aired in um, Not Geo? Uh, this one is actually just a passion project. I did this video for during the pandemic because I ha I wasn't able to travel. Di ako makabiyahe and di ako makawork. Ah. So so this were I, video I collected, that you shot, collected. Yeah, you collected this video and shot them um way before the pandemic when you were much younger and you just edited it um during the pandemic. You put it together. Yeah, I hope that I put it together. Can, yeah, great. Um, you you uploaded it on YouTube or Facebook. Yeah, for sure, I can share it, Tita Lauren. Sure. Uh, I'm sure you have much much more uh, pictures and video, and you have both the talent and the passion and the discipline to be able to do the work you want to do. You're 24 years old. There's so much that we can do to change the world, along with uh, the scientists like um, Carmela and, um, and advocates like Antoinette and later uh, our teacher Rain after you. So it's amazing. Um, and now that during the pandemic and you can't travel, but um, there's limited travel, you can travel around the Philippines. I'm glad sa kabataan mong yan, hindi maraming alam sa batas na ginawa ko yung National, you integrated protected areas are 94, but I heard you say the 94 protected area. So, as young as you are, alam mo yung batas na ginawa ko. Very good. Yeah. Can yeah. you actually <laughs> travel to those wetlands? Sana. Um, we can have a young videographer, photographer, storyteller like you uh, do something to visit all the 94 protected areas. Will your parents allow you? Yeah. <laughs> My mom yeah. will allow me, of course. If it's, okay. I, <laughs> I, I wish you could do that. If we could have, although uh, we have some documentation, but you know, perhaps government documentation is not, um, uh, it's, it's not the way uh, what I saw uh, without uh, downgrading the government documentation. Perhaps uh, artists like you, and um, it would be great to have to see our protected areas from the eyes of a millennial. Yes. Yeah. And someone who has worked with um, CNN and Nazi and all that. So, uh, what do you do every day that would change the environment to campaign for nature and that could change the world? So, speak to those 20 somethings like you. Anong ginagawa mo sa araw-araw? Paano makumbinsi ang mga kaedad mo para baguhin ang pamumuhay natin from banning single-use plastic hanggang sa pag-usapan sa social media, ang campaign for nature hanggang sa buhay natin ay mag-segregate ng garbage, mag-protect ng biodiversity. Okay, God. I think the first step is really being mindful, you know, being aware and always having the intention. Dapat alam mo lagi yung mga intention na ginagawa mo sa pag-sustainable lifestyle changes, all the all these things. I think really that education or building yourself, that taking that initiative to really educate yourself about the environmental issues, following organizations, following DNR, following all the other um, institutions that we have. Or I think that helps you. And I think one also is to be part of a community. I always say that if you really want to be involved in the environment and change the way, um, I guess, the way you live, is to always be part of a community, a greater community other than yourself. Because this is where you can learn from people, learn from mentors, uh, mentors like you, Tita Lauren, mentors like Antoinette, and these other amazing, inspiring people like Carmela, the youth, the generation. So I think it's really about that taking that initiative and step always. Okay, great. I hope I can invite you to Antique one day and maybe you can take a video or document our Sibalom Natural Park and our Northwest Panay Peninsula. Those are two of the 94 protected areas I legislated. And now there's one coming up for a, a bill on the Northern Antique Protected Landscape and Seascape. You will love both the terrestrial and marine biodiversity. Thank you so much. God me here for sharing your talent and your knowledge with us. I hope it's not the first time we're going to oh, sabi ni UA Dr. Pablo Crespo, hope to see him here in Antique. 
the University of Antique will host you and I will host you. Papayan ka ba ni mami mo? Yes, sir. Okay, sure. Thank you, Tito. So, um, it would be amazing. We'll book, the next, we'll book the next flight to Antique. Then you can uh, cover our marine protected areas. And terrestrial as well. Yes. Definitely, Great. Tita. Would be happy yes. to. Thank you so much. And from Gab Mejia. Thank you, Gab. Yes, we go to Teacher Rain in Albay. Ayan. Teacher Rain. Hindi ko na mabasahin yung biodata ni Teacher Rain. Pero importante. Yes, tell us about, yes, uh, how can we convince all teachers, all the andami na mga teachers na environmentalists, uh, to do similar things to what you're doing. Maraming salamat po, Senator Lugar. Yes, Dahil Albay Central School. Yes, yes. Okay, tell us, um, tawag sa'yo, Teacher Rain. At saka ano ba yung Yes O Club Advisor? Ito ay isang award-winning club on campus journalism. Ang sinusulat ba nila ay mostly about nature, environment, climate? Oo. Okay. Um, sa, sa ngayon po, ako ay isang coordinator for Youth for Environment for a schools for organization. Schools organization. Na ng yes o po. So, naging national award-winning coach din po ako kasi gumawa kami ng school paper ang sinag po na gumagawa ng mga kwento tungkol sa environment, tungkol sa culture, na kung saan involve ang aming mga estudyante. So, ako po ay nagpapasalamat sa pangunguna po ni Senator Loren Ligarda kasama po ang Climate Change Commission at ang DepEd sa pagkakataon po na maging bahagi nitong episode na ito. Pag-uusapan po natin o pagkukwentuhan po natin ngayong umaga kung paano po ginagamit ang geocaching and digital storytelling for environmental education sa aming paaralan po. So, ang ECS Geo ay isang produkto ng aktividad na meron po kami sa Albay Central School. Bago ko po simula ng ating kwentuhan, gusto ko muna pong ipakilala ang aking sarili sa mas personal na level. So, makikita nyo po sa susunod po na slide na ako po ay isang teacher sa Albay Central School, elementary teacher, certified National Geographic educator din po. I also like exploring, I also like learning new things, kaya as of this moment, ako po ay nagtatapos tapos ng aking postgraduate studies. Isa rin po akong volunteer ng YMCA. Sila po ang humubog ng aking spirit of volunteerism. Mahilig din po akong kumuha ng mga larawan gaya ni Gab kasi totoo yung sinabi ni Gab na ang pictures kahit hindi mo siya lagyan ng words, may marami ang makakaintindi. At katulad din po ng karamihan ng nanonood sa atin na teacher, ako po ay isang ina at asawa. So baka po magtatanong kayo, paano nyo po napagsasabay-sabay teacher rin na gawin itong lahat at idinagdag nyo pa po itong advokasya na ito? Sa susunod po na slide, makikita po ninyo yung mga larawan ng mga taong nag, nagbigay sa akin ng inspirasyon. Yung kapatid ko, si Rachel, na mahilig mag-scuba diving. Yung kapatid ko, na si, Rick, si Roy, na nag-trail sa mayon. Yung nanay ko, na plantita. Tapos yung tatay ko, na plantito. And of course, my son and my husband, na mahilig din po sa mga nature trips. Gusto ko lang po i-highlight yung point ng power of digital storytelling or ng storytelling itself. Yung anak ko, four years old last year, nakapanood kami together ng isang advertisement tungkol sa kung paano ang straw ay hindi mabuti sa ating mga marine life. Simula noon, hindi ko siya sinabihan ng kahit ano paman. He refused to use straw when he wants to drink from a tetra pack. So doon ko na-realize how important a digital storytelling is, especially sa mga bata. Kasi itong mga kwentong ito, kung naiintindihan ng isang four-year-old, mas lalo pa siguro yung older generation. So this inspires me always that I will use the power of storytelling to my students, to our students, to compel action. Considering also that I'll buy is the third biosphere reserve recognized by UNESCO. So we use storytelling through photography, through experiences, para po magawa ang project na ito. In 2018, next please, in 2018 po, nagkaroon kami ng 
environmental awareness race through recycling habit project o tinatawag po nating earth project doon sa Albay Central School. Sa totoo lang po nung nagsimula po ako, medyo kinakabahan ako kasi kung paano ko siya i-manage considering na meron kaming 2,700 students. At isa sa mga malaking problema namin ay kung paano namin aayusin ang aming solid waste lalo pa po at marami kaming estudyante at mga bata pa ito. Ang kagandahan po, dahil po very supportive ang aming community, ang aming administration, ang aking mga co-teachers, nagawa po namin ito in 2018. At sa totoo lang po, nakapag-save na po kami noong 2018 hanggang 2020 ng halos 300 kilos ng papers at plastic bottles. At yung mga na-recycle po namin na yun, binenta po namin and it serves as our income generating project to fund our projects sa school para sa environment din po. So sabi nga ni Ma'am Antoinette dun sa video niya, a waste will become a waste if we waste it. So ginamit namin yung mga papel na usually scotch paper na itatapon, yung mga plastic bottles na ginagamit para mapondohan ang aming mga proyekto. And of course, because of our support, we, the support that we receive from our community, from parents and stakeholders, we, will, we were able to create this mini eco park Nagaling din sa eco bricks na ginawa ng mga bata kasi yung mga single use plastic sinusuksok po namin doon sa mga plastic bottles ano po para po pag naipon na siya gagawin namin siyang fence or pamplat tapos gagawin na namin siya eventually ginawa namin siyang mini eco park nitong 2018 so itong earth project namin hindi lang po siya limited sa paggawa ng sa labas ng classroom Kagandahan din po ay gumagawa kami ng symposium, symposia at le lecture na kasama ang mga resource speaker namin. And ako po personally, sa klase ko po, I am a science teacher and last time, Filipino teacher po ako, I integrate environmental themes sa mga lection, lection ko po. At ang pinakapaborito ko pong documentary na ipanood sa mga estudyante ko sa grade 6 ay yung buhos po na documentary ni Senator Loren Legarda. Kasi kompletong kompleto na and bite size, kayang intindihin ng mga bata yung konsepto ng climate change sa paraan na kaya nilang intindihin. So yan po yung project namin na Earth Project. Kaso po, dahil nga sa pandemya, natigil kami noong February 2020. At dito po sa susunod, ipapakita ko sa inyo, na, nagkaroon na po kami ng pagkakataon na ako po, I took the, chal the challenge of this pandemic as an opportunity to learn talaga. Nitong tumigil kami ng aming Earth Project nitong February 2020 kasi bawal na yung face-to-face, -face, nakat ang aming klase. Nagkaroon ako ng time para magkaroon ng certification as an educator with Nat Geo. Umattend ako ng mga courses nila, uh, invited yung iba't ibang scientists, mga storytellers din po. And luckily, nakapasa ako doon sa certification nila and I was certified in May 2020. So halos ganyan ko inispend yung lockdown sa bahay namin. And because of Nat Geo, Nat Geo's uh, aim to educate the learners despite the remote learning setting, nag-launch sila ng first competition that was open for all international teachers worldwide. So ito yung unang pagkakataon na nagkaroon ng competition sa lahat ng teachers worldwide kasi usually ang competition ni, East, ni Nat Geo is for scientists, for journalists, and pero naman sa mga educators pero limited lang sa mga North American educators. And we are really lucky that out of 1,000 applications all over the world from the world, from the Nat Geo educators, isa po si Teacher Rain at ang ACS Geo project na kinilala at pinondohan po ng Nat Geo. So ito po yung project ko na masayang-masaya ako na, na ipakilala po. Yung ACS Geo project stands for A Call to Solution Goals for Environmental Oversight. Nito pong nakaraan, ay nagkaroon po kami ng mga signing kasama po ang mga supportive leaders namin sa DepEd. At dahil po sa Nat Geo, nakapagbigay po ako sa school ng 10 tablets. Opo, 10 tablets lang po yung kaya. Pero lahat po ay nagsisimula sa kaunti. Ano po, uh, pakibalik lang po dun sa pinakaunang slide ng mga ACSG. Salamat. Doon po nakita na... Doon sa 2,700 students po kasi, to, to tell you honestly, hindi naman 
ano, mix po ang aming students. So, may mga galing sa middle class at meron din pong may kailangan po ng kaunting tulong din galing po sa ating gobyerno o sa ating mga kasamahan o stakeholders. So ito pong sampung tablets na i-donate ko po sa pamamagitan ng NatGeo. Naari po siya, napahiram po namin siya sa mga estudyante na gustong maging parte nitong activity na ito. Kasi nga, we will use geocaching and digital storytelling using these tablets or gadgets that are available because we would like them to become citizen scientists, citizen journalists, and environmental advocates. So, So, ang ginawa po namin for digital storytelling, we curated different speakers. Makikita nyo po, meron kaming speakers from the USA, the research engineer herself of the Marine Debris Tracker for the next slide po. Meron din po kaming speakers na marine biologists, disaster expert, uh, mga youth models and leaders on their field yung mga storytellers themselves, at pati po yung mga kaibigan natin from OCNR at DENR. So masayang-masaya po kami na, na curate namin itong mga speakers na ito at nagbigay sila ng kanilang topic sa aming mga estudyante. Kasi ang purpose ng digital storytelling namin is to give a bite-sized sustainable developmental goals lecture. Malaki po kasing konsepto ang SDG, pero kung bibigyan namin ng bite-size, chewable, at mas madaling maintindihan ng mga estudyante namin itong mga topic na ito, sa palagay ko po ay mas may inspire sila and they will be compelled to act on these issues. So yan po yung mga naging speakers namin. It is free. Pinalabas po siya sa FB Live. Modular man o online class, they are all welcome to join our class. Even po yung mga parents na hihila na para manood at yung mga kalaro o kung sino man. So ito po, nakikita nyo po na yung mga estudyante namin nanonood via Facebook. Diyan po sa aming next slide na makikita po yung mga cellphone, dinagamit, laptop. Meron din po na TV, nagsishare sila ng magkapatid. So parang nagiging bonding na siya every week. Kasi nagsimula kami April 16 and we will uh, end at June 4 for the celebration po ng World Environmental Day. So para sa amin, masayang masaya kami kasi 2,700 lang yung estudyante namin. Pero yung reach na inaabot namin sa we kada webinar, kung makikita nyo po sa aming screen, halos... 4,500 sa reach and engagement namin 10,000 po sa kada webinar. So nakakataba ng puso kasi itong simple aktibitad na ito gusto namin talagang ipaabot hindi lamang sa Albay Central School kundi sa lahat ng mga mag-aaral para po sila ay maging bahagi ng pangangalaga sa kalikasan. Baka po magsabi kayo o baka naman puro grade 6 or grade 5 or grade 4 lang yung nagpa-participate. Paano naman yung kinder? Kami po ay masaya na kahit yung kinder students namin ay nai-enjoy ang activity nito. So panoorin po natin yung video na pinrepare ko po sa inyo. In 1963, a person has decided to worry about the planet. So in 1970, she celebrated a day called Earth Day. So yan, nagpapasalamat po kami, nagpapasalamat po kay Teacher Carla at sa parents po ng mga kinder students namin for allowing me to share this video. Nakakatuwa lang kasi kahit sila mismo, hindi namin kailangan pilitin. Sila mismo yung nagbibigay ng itong mga output na to. Tapos sabi, teacher, picturean mo kami or i-video mo kami tapos para ma-share po sa amin. Kasi that's the purpose of digital storytelling. We tell the story, we share the story to others para magkaroon ng change doon sa makikinig. And at the same time, a rippling effect, ibabahagi niya rin yung kwento sa iba. So the part 
of digital storytelling is now over. Ipabahagi ko sa inyo yung geocaching. Ito po yung isa sa mga exciting activities namin under ACS Geo Project. We use this application called Marine Debris Tracker. And if you can see my slide right now po, na yung mapa ng Pilipinas, merong nakapin na parteng Manila at parteng Legazpi. It is because sa Legazpi City po, Albay Central School is the lone school or community that is using this Marine Debris Tracker app as of this moment. Kami po ang first sa Albay Central School. At siguro po yung 31 plus na nakikita nyo ngayon, yan yung mga estudyante namin na naka-enroll sa Albay Central School remotely kasi nga meron po kami online and modular class. And we make this possible because we would like to invite our students to become part of a solution. Our solution doesn't stop in the storytelling itself. Nagsa-stop or start pa lang kami with the action itself. So how do we act on this? We invite our students to become citizen journalists, to become citizen scientists by sending the data they are collecting through the Marine Debris Tracker app. And as of this moment, although it might not be significant for you, meron na kaming na-track na 4,362 liter. Ito po yung mga liters na misplaced wala sa tamang basurahan, and it might end up sa bodies of water and might contribute to the Great Garbage Pacific Patch na meron tayo sa Pacific Ocean. And we don't want that to happen. Microplastic is one of the problems that we have po, lalo na nakaka-apekto siya sa ating marine life. And eventually, pag kumain tayo ng isla, ewan ko kung napanood niyo po yung news nung nakaraang araw, ay may bumili po na isang nanay ng isda at nagulat siya na pagbukas po o pagpalinis ng isda ay merong plastic sa loob. So, imagine, imagine how this activity saved 4,362 liter because we track them. And this is processed by the National Geographic uh, researchers marine biologists, and it is being used for their study. So kami po sa Albay Central School, as we teach our students to become competent in their academics, we make sure that we develop their sense of stewardship towards the environment. Po. So we create this activity. We create this opportunity, their digital tools to use for our learners kahit po nasa modular or online learning setting man, man yan. Siguro sasabihin nyo, Ma'am Rain, paano po yung mga studyante na walang internet? Luckily po itong application, pag meron ka pong internet, maka-upload mo siya lang agad. Pag wala, you can save the session and later on, pwede ka na mag-upload pag meron ka ng internet. And this are the power of using technology as part of educating our learners for environment. So allow me to end my kwentuhan with you this morning through a simple video presentation I created. This is, uh, yung videos po ay not mine, I downloaded it, but the yung tula na sinulat ko sa akin po yun. Nung inimbitahan po ako ng opisina po ni Senator Loren Legarda, I was so inspired to create this poem kasi po ako ay mahilig sumulat ng tula at magkuha ng photos. So sana po ay mapakinggan nyo at ma-appreciate po ninyo itong tulang ginawa ko para sa inyo. Di nangarap. Sino ba ang di nangarap na sa bawat pagsulyap sa kapaligiran ang tanging nangingibabaw ay bughaw at yuntian? Sino ba ang di nangarap na sariwang hangin ay malalanghap? Na tanging halimuyak ay mula sa mga maririkit na bulakla? Sino ba ang di nangarap na malasap ang sariwang pagkain mula sa biyayang kaloob sa atin. Sino ba ang di nangarap na marinig ang mga huni ng ibong nag-uusap, malayang lumipad, umuusad? Sino ba ang di nangarap na sa bawat hampas ng along malalasap, tayo ay sisisid sa malinis na tubig alat at di sa toneladang kalat? Sana'y di manatiling pangarap.
So for um, ending my presentation po, sana po hindi matatiling pangarap na ang ating kapaligiran ay luntian at bughaw. Natutuwa po siyo, Teacher Rain. Um, I feel your passion. I see your intellect, your dedication to your work. Uh, natutuwa ako, nakapartner natin dito ang DepEd, ang uh, mga teachers, mga uh, lahat ng educators, pati learners, pati principals, pati mga presidents ng SUC ay nanonood sa atin at isa'y modelong guru ka at natutuwa ako na ginamit mo ang virtual gatherings, uh, webinars para sa environment at uh, ang dami ng engagement ninyo, no? At ang pinapag-usapan ay environment at ang iyong talento sa paggagawa uh, ng uh, tula. Ang galing-galing. At nagamit mo pala yung aking matagal ng ginawang uh, documentary, yung Two Big yes, no? Ano sa tagulang? Buhos! Okay. Yes, I po. think, I'm glad you reminded me that's more than 10 years ago, pero that is as relevant then as it is now. Um, just to remind everybody, this is on Facebook Live and this is already on my Facebook page. And I would like um, the presentations of our panel, our expert um, resource speaker today to be immortalized in Facebook para magaya ng iba. And I like what you did, citizens, uh, scientists, no? Maganda yan. Um, magandang i-adopt yung mga ginagawa nyo sa Albay sa iba't ibang lugar sa Pilipinas as well. Inaakma natin sa kanilang environment. I really feel that you enjoy your job so much. I'm sure na mahal na mahal ka ng mga uh, learners mo, ng mga estudyante, hindi ba? Yes. Teacher Ray, ilang taong ka na? Um, Senator Lauren, ako po ay 29 years old po. But you've been teaching for 11 years ba? Hindi. Opo. Um, Nag-start na po kasi ako magturo at 19 years old. I started as a volunteer wow. teacher. Tapos po, after a year, na-absorb na po ako as permanent sa DepEd po. Wow! Nakakatuwa! Modelong guro. Teacher Rain, um, thank you so much. Um, Dos Mabalos. Tama ba ako? Opo. <laughs> At, uh, Salamat thank po. Thank you. Uh, pagkatapos po nito, uh, just to guide my staff, we will show the antique video na pinapakita natin usually in the beginning. But now, uh, we'll show it um, after the show. We'll show the legacy video para din mapaalala sa kanila yung mga batas na ginawa ko sa aking tatlong termino sa Senado at papakita ng ibang letrato on environmentalism na gusto natin ipakita. Teka, babasahin ko ba? Naku, ang daming Facebook or oh, comments. Where is it? Okay. Okay, let's see. Where is it? Kaya, okay. Kung hindi ko mahanap ngayon yung Facebook, let's see. Ah, it's here. Wow. Ang daming nanonood. Teka, can I just um, read some? Macken, Enrico, um, Macalinaw, Anton Canha, um, Anton Can, yes, Richie, Mauricio, Vince, Tide, um, yes, ay, marami silang puri, pero wag ko na basahin yung puri, nakakahiya naman sa binawa. Okay, Anwar Din, um, let me, can I wear my glasses? <laughs> okay, Vince, Tide, uh, Anwarudin uh, DRCS, um, yes, Holita Leones, uh, Rosalie Andrano, um, Jeff Kinney, great presentation, and from DepEd, David Peralta watching, Marilu Estrada Penular from Taguig, Pateros Taguig National High School, Jen, John Rodman from Bobon Elementary School, shout out sa mga teachers daw. Hello guys, love love, sabi niya, Lalaine Perez, talento, Marlene Berdida Odias Ison from Kidapawan City Division. Geraldine Milano from DepEd Albay. Claribel Ignacio. Uh, Mary Jane Soriano. Mayra Caredo from Zamboanga. Hayden Rose Bantilan from Zarangani. Emilia Maynes from La Union. Elsie Bonifacio. Maria Teresa de los Reyes. Mitzi Calderon Abalos from Nueva Ecija. MJ Save from Zarangani. Lorena uh, Barrera. Virginia Bailon from Bacoor, all over the country talaga. Ang dami pang banggit dito. At syempre, mga taga-antike, nanunood lahat. Nakalagay dito, hardworking journalist environment kong resuman. Naku, nakakatuwa naman si Anton. Okay, and live watching from San Jose de Buena Vista. At uh, may shout-out pa sila dito. Ang dami. Anyway, 
thank you so much, uh, Teacher Rain. Um, pwede ba namin i-adopt ang iba sa ginagawa mo sa aming uh, DepEd schools as well? And I can um, request uh, our DepEd head uh, to watch this and see how we can innovate and do similar things if we're not yet doing it, but we also do our webinars as well. Thank you so much for your passion, your dedication, for inspiring us uh, to continue the work we do. You know, dahil kay Antoinette, dahil kay Gab, dahil kay Carmela, at dahil kay Rain. Sulit na ang aking pagod ng 1998 till 2019 sa lahat ng puyat at pagod sa gawa ng batas nakakaiyak sulit sulit ang paghihirap ko gawin lahat ng batas na akala ko walang kuhapansin akala ko walang may alam akala ko sabi ko all the laws I did were mere ink on paper if nobody cares about it and nobody implements it and nobody knows it but you all are doing it on the ground sa isla sa negros si Carmela ang galing galing sa albay ang ating model teacher our storyteller na si Gab binodocument niya at saka ang ating UNEP ambassador uh, at uh, NGO champion um yan iiyak ako because Sulit na sulit. Ay, <laughs> Antoinette is still there. Okay. So thank you so much. It's been more than, wait, anong oras? Patawad ako naiiyak sa nature. Ay, ako grabe ako naiiyak sa nature talaga. Ay, ang init na ng tangali ang tapat. O sige, pinatayungan ako dito. <laughs> okay, okay lang. But thank you so much to the Climate Change Commission. Thank you so much to DepEd, our partner. Thank you to the DA. Mamimigay ba tayo ng starter kits? Yes, we're giving away DA starter kits para matuto na kayo magtanim uh, ng ating edible garden so we grow our own food. Sana pinakinggan nyo, hindi lang ang Lauren Legarda, kundi yung ating apat na mga kabataan or game changers who will really change their little corners of the world and for every ripple, there will be big waves of change in our country, in our lives, in our society, in our community, in the world. With that, I thank all of you for joining us this hot but beautiful morning. Yes, it's an honor to be with our young game changers for climate, for the environment. May this be the beginning of a lifelong and long-lasting collaboration to save Mother Earth and to campaign for nature. Thank you so much. Attorney Ipat Luna, what's your takeaway? Nandyan ka for two hours. Ma'am, the guests are so inspiring today. Uh, I, yes. I was suffering from climate despair for a long time, but uh, slowly it's being eroded by seeing our youth. Exactly. Um, alam ko, minsan tayo, ikaw, climate despair. <laughs> ako naman, never ako nag-despair kasi as the lawmaker, I can always create the laws. Pag si Ipat ay nagde-despair, ako may solution. Di ba gano'n ang ating ano eh, synergy eh. Siya, oh, misa nagagalit na kasi abogado eh. Ako naman, hindi. Gago ako ng batas. Ah, walang ganito? Gagawin ko. Hindi ginagawa, oversight ko, popondohan ko. But with this youth of our country, there is great hope for a biodiverse, rich Philippines. Okay. Ma'am, bagay sa biodiversity statement nyo for the Biodiversity Day, International Day of Biodiversity. Oh yes, can we play that? Um, so we play the legacy video, we play the Day of Biodiversity, and uh, akin yung mga phone number ng mga batang to, gusto ko silang tatawag. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thank you for all our partners. Um, Sonia Mendoza was watching Mother Earth Foundation, Eco Waste Coalition, Institute for Climate and Sustainable Cities, as well as Climate Reality Philippines of Vice President Al Gore. Thank you so much to the four of you. You have changed our perception, my perception that my laws are nasayang hindi pala, and you've changed the mindset of attorney Ipatlun, an activist environment lawyer na nagagalit na, kala niya wala na pag-asa, may pag-asa pala dahil kay 
Teacher Rain, dahil kay Carmela, dahil kay Gab, at kay Antoinette. Thank you. And there's so many kinds in different kinds all over the country, in all our islets and mountains. And the four of you have to make me convince all of them to do the things we are jointly doing. With that, thank you so much. And happy Biodiversity Day last um, Saturday. Advanced Happy World Environment Day. Let every day be a day of biodiversity where we protect the earth, where we save nature, and we campaign for nature. Okay. Thank you for staying. Antoinette, you were in the in the beginning. Thank you for staying, all of you. Duro gid nga salamat. Palangga ko kamo.
1998, tandang-tanda ko pa, nang magsimula ang aking political career na halal bilang freshman senator sa 11th Congress, rank number one, napasa akin ko ang mahigit sa kalahati ng total na national votes, pinakabatang senator at isa sa dalawang natatanging female senators noong panahon na yun. Ngunit ito'y hindi isang posisyon na inihain at ibinigay na lamang sa akin. Pinagpawisan at pinagpaguran ko ang karangalang ito. Mahabang sakripisyo at matagal kong pinaghandaan ang gawain alam kong para sa akin. Simula pa man ay nais ko nang maglingkod, taus puso kong hangad maging isang public servant, ang makamit at makapagdulot ng tunay at makabuluhang gawain. At noon pa man ay may mga usapin at issues na matimbang sa aking puso. Ako'y naglingkod bilang chairperson para sa mga kumite ng Environment at Economic Affairs. Bago pa man ako umabot sa edad na 40, ako'y hinirang bilang isa sa mga global leaders for tomorrow sa World Economic Forum sa Davos, Switzerland. Iginawa din sa akin ang United Nations Environment Program Award sa Turin, Italy noong 2001. Lahat ng ito habang ako'y patuloy na nagsusulong ng mga batas na layuning mga laga sa karapatang pambabae at pangkabataan tulad ng Anti-Domestic Violence Act, Anti-Child Labor Law at ang Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act. Ako rin ang pangunahing nagsulong upang maging batas ang Ecological Solid Waste Management Act. Pagating ang 2001, ako ay nahalal bilang Senate Majority Floor Leader ang kauna-unahan at natatanging babaeng nagkamit ng posisyon na ito. Patuloy akong nagsikap bilang isang mambabatas. At noong 2007 ay muling nakamit ang number one senator position. Napa sa akin ang pinakamaraming boto at kinilala bilang bukod tanging woman senator na nagkamit ng top position sa Senate race twice. Tuloy-tuloy sa paglilingkod, tuloy sa pagiging mambabatas at tuloy sa mas marami pang anbukasya. At noong 14th Congress, ako'y namuno bilang chairperson ng mga sumusunod na komite. Ngunit walang patid at walang humpay ang aking gawain bilang mambabatas. Kaya't sa sumunod na labindalawang taon, patuloy akong naglingkod bilang senador sa 15th, 16th at 17th Congress ng Pilipinas. Kasabay pa rin ito ang aking pagsulong sa mga advokasyang malapit sa aking puso. Patuloy akong namuno sa mga komite sa climate change, foreign relations, finance at cultural communities. Buong puso kong pinagmamalaki ang aking mga narating bilang isang mambabatas. Ngunit higit pa sa mga batas na aking sinulong, walang kapagurang pinapagpatuloy ko ang aking mga personal na advokasya. Noong 2009, pinamunuan ko ang matagumpay na pagsasabatas ng Landmark Philippine Climate Change Act. At noong June ng taong yun, ako'y nagtid ng keynote speech sa forum on the human impact of climate change sa Geneva. At patuloy akong nang hikayat na magsulong ng makabagong pananaw sa governance upang masagot ang lumalaking panganib sa climate disaster. Doon ay nilunsan ang aking Legarda Doctrine, isang bagong development thinking at holistic development philosophy ayon sa sustainable at equitable socio-economic ecosystems of governance. Pagating ng Disyembre ng parehong taon, ako'y nagsalita tungkol sa climate change sa United Nations Climate Change Conference sa Copenhagen at personal nang nag-unjok sa mga mambabatas ng mga ibang bansa na magsulong ng mga batas para tumugon sa mga climate change issues. Ako rin ay matagal nang nagsusulong sa pagpapanatili ng ating national identity at culture at ng ancestry ng mga indigenous peoples na igawad sa akin ang mga sumusunod na titulo mula sa iba't ibang katutubo at indigenous peoples groups. Ako rin ang pangunahing nagsulong sa pagbabalik ng bansa sa prestigious na Venice Biennale ang Olympics ng Contemporary Art World matapos ang 51 years na walang partisipasyon. Sa gitna ng mga ito ay patuloy ko pa rin pinananagutan ang aking hangaring maglingkod. Ang damdamin ko'y nag-uumapaw at taong
Tapos puso akong nagpapasalamat sa mga tumulong sa akin itong mga nakalipas na taon. Hinding hindi ko malilimutan ang mga taong nagtiwala, nagsakripisyo, ako'y habang buhay na magpapasalamat. Ngunit mahigit pa sa lahat ng aking narating, hindi pa sa mga batas na isinulong at sa mga komite na pinamunuan, maging sa mga awards at mga parangal na iginawad sa akin. Ako'y buong pusong nagagalak sa tuwing maaalala sa isipan ang ngiti ng mga taong aking naabot. Ang mga kabataan, kababaihan, mga mag-anak at komunidad, mga katutubo, magsasaka, mangingisda, at ang mga minamaliit at hindi man lamang binibigyan ng halaga. Ang damdamin ko'y patuloy nilang naaantig. Sila'y nagbibigay halaga at kabuluhan sa lahat ng aking gawain. Patuloy akong nauudyok magsumikap. At walang pagod ay pagpatuloy ang bukod tanging karangalang makapaglingkod. Ako po ang inyong abang lingkod, Loren Legarda. We humans measure time based on our dreams and aspirations. We make decisions for ourselves and our children, thinking about 10 or 20 years hence. And those timelines are short in evolutionary terms, so our life paths would not immediately seem to be relevant to what happens to nature. Sadly, these life paths chosen with such short timelines are what have driven us to the precipice. In 2014, Elizabeth Colbert released her book, The Sixth Extinction. This is a seminal work comparable to Rachel Carson's dire warnings in Silent Spring. Nearly 60 years ago, a book I read when I was in grade school. In it, Colbert used intellectual and natural history and field experience to tell the world that our biodiversity is in a rapid decline trajectory. We are in an ongoing mass extinction event. The previous five times this happened when the diversity of life on earth suddenly and dramatically dropped, the causes were natural. Biologists, Ecologists, climate scientists are all in a mad scramble to monitor and document what is happening. And some expect it to be as devastating as the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs. This time around, the cataclysm is being caused by us, humans. In 2019, this call to action to try and to halt, possibly to reverse the biodiversity crisis was followed up by a higher alarm level. The Intergovernmental Panel on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services released a report saying that unless we reduce the intensity of human actions that cause biodiversity loss, and I quote, there will be a further acceleration in the global rate of species extinction, which is already at least tens to hundreds of times higher than it has averaged over the past 10 million years. The drivers of these biodiversity losses have accelerated in the past 50 years and current efforts cannot suffice to meet our conservation goals. Only transformative changes across economic, social, political, and technological innovations and factors will actually work. It is not enough that we have biodiversity conservation organizations and a bureau to manage our parks and our wildlife. The way of life 
and the system of governance and sustainable development that has been causing the spasm and the resulting chains and chains of extinctions will need to change. And we have a very small window to do so, actually in our lifetime, until the year 2030, and that's in nine years time. This is why I strongly, passionately believe that the passage of the Philippine Environmental and the Natural Capital Accounting System Bill that I authored in the House of Representatives is sorely needed. What is that? We have actually valued priceless services offered by nature as free thus far in our trajectory for economic progress. What is happening is that our economy is contracting drastically as well. No thanks to the pandemic, but also no thanks to the deterioration of how we handle nature. We can no longer operate our economies as if nature's gifts are infinite or limitless. And if any of us still hope to see a decade further than 2030 with the things we now enjoy and cherish, we must be part of the necessary change that must happen this decade, which is the UN Decade on Ecological Restoration. Many of us must change our life goals and our dreams so that humanity can collectively address this threat with expertise, with wisdom and knowledge. We have to have more biologists, ecologists, circular economy experts, renewable energy and zero waste professionals who can dream of a fresh start for the planet past 2030. I am confidently and optimistically claiming that our youth today who make up the majority of our population, would be the driving force of innovation in this decade. I am counting, I am counting on the youth, the young people, to transition us from being unwitting destroyers of our own habitat to nurturers of our home planet, knowledgeable about its impacts, values, and costs of what we are losing or gaining in our quest for livelihood and enterprises. As we mark the first International Day of Biological Diversity on the first year of our turnaround decade, this decade during the pandemic, let us have a common understanding of a better normal, an agreement for a greener, sustainable path and a new green compact for an economy that does not take what cannot be put back. And I say this in the middle of a little forest that I planted by native trees around me that sustain life on this day of biodiversity.